Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my course on Photoshop for landscape photography. My name is Austin James Jackson. Really excited that you're here today. Now, if you missed the first video on setting up a workspace, make sure you check that out. We'll link it here. Um, and of course, once you already understand this video, we'll link the videos down the line um, that are coming up so that you can find the videos that you need in order to really understand Photoshop. But this is the second video in this long series. Now, this video is where we're going to dive in and finally start learning some editing techniques in Photoshop. So I'm really excited to show you guys three different techniques today. Now that means in this video, we're gonna be covering three topics. We're gonna to be covering layers, we're gonna be covering adjustment layers, and we are gonna be covering Adobe Camera Raw. Now once you understand these three things, you're gonna know enough to get started here in Photoshop and to really start pushing and pulling your images in ways that make sense. Now if you still don't quite understand the workspace, make sure you jump back one video, I'll link that here, to the first video in the course where we set up the workspace so that both you and I can have a very similar looking workspace space. Otherwise, let's go ahead and jump right in into Photoshop. I've already got my image here and we have this moose photo that I'm going to be working on today. I shot this one just this last few days. So I figured it'd be a perfect time to work on an image. Now, the first thing you're going to see when you load in here um, to Photoshop, I just loaded this in straight from Lightroom, no edits, is you have the background layer, which is locked. I always like to unlock that background layer so that I can work on it. Now, unlike Lightroom, which works um, basically down from the right side where you adjust all of your sliders as you go, Photoshop works a little differently in that it uses layers. Now, the first thing that I want to explain is layers. Now, you can hover and read this here. Uh, layers are like stacks of paper, the layers panels, where you organize and manage parts of your image as separate editable layers. Essentially, how that works means that I can apply adjustments to this photo or this layer um, on top and anything, it's like stacking things on top of each other. So when I put adjustment layers on top, everything can be added together. I can put 10 different adjustments all above this layer and it will affect this layer here. Now, not all layers are completely see-through to make things a little bit more confusing. So what you need to understand is that a photo layer here, it's blocking all the pixels under it. If I created a new layer here, and let's just say I painted black, uh, you can see how you can't see this black at all because my photo layer is blocking it. But if I put this layer on top, you can see now we have black covering our image. Obviously, we don't want that. We're going to delete that. So when you create a new layer, be aware whether uh, you can see through that layer or not. Now, that maybe doesn't totally make sense yet. I think the best way to do it is to just start showing you the things that we're going to do and talking about how they work as layers. Now, the first thing here I want to show you is adjustment layers. These are really the bread and butter of Photoshop. This is how you are going to get going, get started, um, how you're going to do a variety of different things. And this is really what I'm doing most of the time here in Photoshop. Now, you'll find your adjustment layers down here, the little half circle with a slash thing through, whatever you want to call it. These are your adjustment layers. I know when you look at this, it looks like a lot, but don't worry. You only need to know how to use, I believe it's four of these, maybe even three. Um, and I'm going to open them all at once um, so that you can see them all. So the ones you need to know how to use are curves. I'm also going to go down here and open. Uh, we're going to use color balance. I'm going to open another one. We are going to use hue saturation. And if you want to use brightness contrast, you can, but I much prefer just using the curve for brightness and contrast adjustments. But this would be kind of the easy way to just add brightness and contrast to your image. But I think the better way is to just use curves. So these are the three that you need to understand how to use. Now, these are adjustment layers. You can see this little symbol here. These symbols, by this not having like a solid photo on it, um, this shows you that these are totally non-destructive, meaning I can adjust the curve here, I can adjust the hue saturation, and I can still go back and adjust the curve. Now, there's some layers when you put them on top that you can't see through them, meaning it is called destructive editing. Um, this means that once you edit something on top, you can't go back and edit something down below. I'll show you a destructive layer a little bit later in this video. I'm just going to hit Command Z to undo all that. Now, to use these three adjustments, um, this is really, I do most, probably I'd say 75% of my editing with just these three adjustments. This is going to get you there. 
Um, and this white box here, in case you're wondering, it's a layer mask. We're going to talk about that in next week's video. Don't worry about layer masks yet. This is essentially how you take an adjustment from being global uh, to make it a local adjustment. So if you want to select the moose, but again, we'll talk about that in next week's video. Now I'm going to show you guys how to use curves. I've got a couple other videos on the channel uh, that are kind of a deep dive into curves, but I will give you the brief explanation because it is something that you're going to want to use quite a bit in your images. Now this curve here has a graph that is plotting all the pixels in your image. You can see in my image I have a lot of pixels here on the darker side, I have a few in the mid range, and then I have a lot on the far bright side. So you can see probably these pixels in the sky are going to be made up of the things on the right, whereas my grasses and stuff are kind of in the middle, and my moose is kind of on the left. Don't worry too much about the values in the back. I think a lot of people get too caught up with what the graph looks like. Don't worry too much about this, but that is the explanation behind it. Now the curve is going to be the absolute best way to add contrast. There's no better way to add contrast to globally to your image. And the way that the curve works, if I click on the curve and I drag it down, it darkens. If I drag it up, it lightens. Now creating one point is just going to darken or lighten the whole image. But where this really gets powerful is when I create multiple points. So I'm going to create I like to create one point here on about the 25% mark on the bottom, uh, basically at the where the first square closes on the top right corner. I just want to drag that down. That's going to darken the darks of my scene. Then I'll grab up here on the like kind of top right, that 75% mark, and I will drag up. Now you can see when I toggle this before and after, it's darkened the darks and it's lightened the lights. Now, this is a much better way to add contrast because when you just use the contrast slider, it equally darkens the darks as much as it lightens the lights. Now, in this image, I don't really want to darken the darks quite as much, but I do still want to lighten the lights. So I might bring this point back up. Now, you want to be sure you're grabbing the same point. Don't be creating more points because it starts to make your curve do some wonky things. So just start off with two. We'll bring that back up and maybe we'll bring that down just a hair. Let's bring this down. Now this image doesn't need a ton of contrast to begin with, but a lot of images will. So keep that in mind. Now I also like to use, and I've talked about this in previous videos, I always like to grab the blacks point and bring that up just a little bit. That essentially creates the what the darkest pixel in the image is going to look like. So this just softens it. So you'll see when I bring this up, if I go too far, it makes my moose look like matte and lose all detail. I just wanna bring this up a touch to bring back some of that detail. Usually I wanna get the output roughly around 10. And that's how I like to add contrast to my image. We'll make that a little bit bigger there for you. So you can see I've added contrast, but I haven't really darkened the moose or lost details like I would have with a normal contrast slider. That's how to use the curve. You can play with that a bunch. You can use as many curves adjustments as you want, but that's how I recommend adding contrast into your scene. We'll move up and talk about color balance next. Now in the color balance layer, this is essentially everything that you need to do to white balance. You have the option of adjusting um, the warmth, the tint, and then I don't know what you call cyan or red, but it's some part of white balance as well. Um, so if you see that your image needs it, which this one doesn't really need much adjustment, I don't think. I definitely don't want to make it uh, warmer. And yeah, I don't really want to make it cooler either. You can make some adjustments here to the midtones. I don't think I need to do anything to that, or to the magenta and the green, rather. Um, and I don't really need to do anything to the cyan and red in this image. However, in your image, if you need to do that, you would do that here in the color balance. Now you'll notice that the tone says midtones. Um, that just leave it on midtones. You can kind of play with shadows and highlights, but to be honest, I never use shadows or highlights for this. I think um, for most people, especially for a lot of amateur editors, um, it's just going to trip you up. So keep it in midtones there um, when you make your adjustments to your color balance. Um, now, lastly, you're going to use the hue saturation, and this is a really fun layer to use because you can do a lot of adjustments here with this adjustment layer. Now, when you click on it to begin with and you go up to your properties here, you'll notice that we are in master, which means we're affecting the whole image. So we can adjust the saturation of the whole image just like that. We can bring up the lightness if we want, but the lightness generally tends to wash things out a little bit. So I don't use that a whole lot when I'm on master but I will add saturation that way. If you're wondering where the vibrance is, there's actually another adjustment layer um, and it is called vibrance, I believe, and it, it is right here. 
This allows you to adjust the vibrance or the saturation. If you just want to do a global adjustment, you don't want to make any like targeted color adjustment. Um, I don't use that a whole lot, but for a lot of people that like to use vibrance, you'll find it there. So on this one, I might go to the master and bring up the saturation just a little bit. Now, this is a really fun tool that we may dive a little bit deeper into later to do some advanced um, color adjustments. But for right now, all you need to know is that this is where you're going to go to make most color adjustments. Now, if you want to get specific with it and target a particular color, you can click where it says master and you can select a color here. For example, if I was feeling like his horns were maybe getting a little too colorful, a little too dark, whatever, I might select yellows. Um, and alternatively, if you don't know that that's necessarily going to be yellows, I can click on the eyedropper tool and I can just click here just like that. Now I have the selection changed here. Now this shows you what colors are selected. Anything between these two central lines, these colors are all 100% selected. Anything that's between the far left and that 25% mark or 75% mark and the far right, um, those are going to be partially selected um, as well. So what that looks like essentially now when I adjust the saturation, you can see it's adjusting just those yellows. It just so happens that uh, basically everything in my image is yellow. So when I desaturate it, um, you can see that it's desaturating the whole image. But I can go in and just make some basic adjustments here like that as I see fit. Um, and then I might go back up to master. I might increase the saturation again. One thing that I like to do to a lot of my images is go into blues and I will drop the blues. You can see like down here, um, this is a little bit too blue for me. So I'll just drop the blue saturation there to just kind of make that not scream at you quite as much. I might increase the lightness as well. So you can do it a lot with this hue saturation tool here. And we'll dive into it a little bit later on in the course uh, in a few videos down the road to really show you some advanced things that you can do. But this is kind of going to be your go to to selecting all sorts of different colors, very similar to your HSL sliders. Now, as mentioned, I want to show you guys um, what is called Camera Raw here in Photoshop. Now, Camera Raw is exactly the same thing as Lightroom, just that it doesn't have any cataloging. It only has editing. But this is really what I recommend to people that are newer to Photoshop. Ideally, in the end, you want to wean yourself away from Camera Raw as much as possible. But when you're newer, uh, there's nothing wrong with using Camera Raw because it can achieve the same things that Lightroom can, but you're still in Photoshop, so you can still utilize a lot of the tools that you can use in Photoshop. Now to load up Camera Raw, you need to select a photo layer. You can't select an adjustment layer. So you'll select a photo layer here like that. And you'll go to Filter, you'll go to Camera Raw Filter. Now the thing about it is that when you use Camera Raw, it needs to be on a photo layer. Now that photo layer, um, if I click on this layer and go to Camera Raw, these filters above these adjustments will not be applied because they are above my layer here. So what you need to do is merge all visible layers into one layer. That is going to allow you to continue going forwards with your edit, um, or ideally uh, you would have used Camera Raw at the beginning of your edits before you use these adjustment layers, so then you can put them on top. But I wanna show you how you would do this if you're just in the middle of your edit and you think of something that you wanna do, but you only know how to do it in Camera Raw. So we need to merge all visible layers. Now the hotkey for this, it's a big one. So first of all, click on your top layer, then click command, option, shift, and E all at the same time that merges all visible layers. That's control, uh, alt, option, shift, and E on a PC. So remember, command, option, shift, E, or control, option, shift, E. That will merge all visible layers. Now we have this layer on the top. Now, now we can go ahead and select this layer, go to filter, we can go to Camera Raw. Now again, remember, we are doing it this way because had we selected this bottom layer, we wouldn't have any of these curves, color balance, or hue saturation adjustments that we applied to the image. Um, so we would be editing that base layer without those adjustments. But because we've stamped that layer, now the photo that we're editing here in Camera Raw is the same as the image that we were just editing there in Photoshop. Now you'll see 
In Camera Raw, we've got access to all the same tools that you have in Lightroom, so you can use whatever makes you comfortable. So whatever you wanna do here, you can go ahead and do it. I'm just gonna apply a few basic little effects here um, just so that I can kind of show you a few more things. So I'm just gonna apply like a little vignette there and don't worry too much about the effects I'm applying. These are all things that you can use in Lightroom. They're the same tabs. You've got your light color effects curve and all of the extra stuff, all the same things that you have in Lightroom. So if you know how to use Lightroom, you know how to use Adobe Camera Raw. It has all the same sliders, basically uh, in the exact same way. When you're done here, and also, not to mention, um, before we move on, it also has your masking tools. It has all of those other tools um, that you have in Lightroom that you can use. So it's literally the same thing, except without cataloging. When you're done here in Camera Raw, go ahead and hit OK, and let that load back in. Now you'll see that that stamped everything on top of this layer, meaning that I no longer have access to this. If I go back to Camera Raw here, uh, I am not able to readjust. So whatever changes I make there, those are kind of final adjustments unless I'm gonna delete and just restart um, right here again. So now the one thing that you need to remember is non-destructive versus destructive layers. These layers here, these adjustment layers, they're all see-through. You can see what is below them. This layer, photo layers, you cannot see what's below them. So if I go through and I delete the hue saturation, the color balance and the curves, notice how my image didn't change. That's because I still have this image on the top. If I delete or hide this image, now I can go back through and if I delete these layers, they will go away because now we are essentially taking away this layer here, taking this piece of paper away so that we can see what's under it to see those transparent layers. So keep that in mind at all times when you're editing, whether it's destructive or non-destructive. Now this can be a really confusing concept, so I'd recommend just diving in there with a photo of your own um, and trying to kind of just figure it out as you go and to use this video. Now the last thing that I wanna mention here is that you have the opportunity to use the opacity. Um, there's a couple other things in this layers panel that I will show you. Let's say for example, I grab a curves layer and I create an S curve. And I like the contrast that's being applied, but it's too strong. Rather than trying to make adjustments here, which you totally could do if you wanted, you have the option to adjust the opacity. I know there's a lot of stuff down here in the layers. The only two things that you need to understand how to use is opacity and the blend modes. We're gonna cover blend modes a little bit down the road, so don't worry about blend modes. We're gonna leave it in normal right now, but do worry about the opacity. So if you want to adjust the opacity of this layer, you could bring it down to 50%. Now the adjustment that's been applied will apply at just 50%, so you can work it in that way. Now this is the same thing as going up here and just reducing these points to make it a little less strong, but the opacity slider is a really convenient way if you apply an effect and you like what it's doing but it comes in too strong to use the opacity slider. Now I can hide that, I'm gonna work on this layer down here. So let's say that these adjustments that I made in Adobe Camera Raw, I'm finding that they're maybe a little bit too strong and I want it to be closer to the original image. Now I can go down and drop this to 50% or however much percent I want. Now you can see the effects are applying a little bit less strong. So now this layer is like 50% opacity. So I can see what's below it uh, just a little bit, just 50%. I can see half of what's below it essentially. So now if I toggle these adjustments, um, I can potentially edit them a little bit, but I'm still covering them up 50%. Now the layers is a little bit difficult to explain, but hopefully that makes sense. Uh, like I said, I would really recommend jumping in there, trying it on your own. Um, and now really use this video because you will have all the keys that you need to get started in Photoshop with these adjustment layers, um, Adobe Camera Raw, and then of course just using the layers to edit your photo as you go. Now in next week's video, we're gonna be talking about layer masking. Um, and layer masking is how you're going to take these adjustments, which you can see are mostly global adjustments, how you can take those adjustments and make them local, which is going to help you to really bring your images home and to really make them powerful. It's gonna show off the power of Photoshop. So hopefully that makes sense. If you guys have questions about the layers, um, destructive, non-destructive, all that good stuff, let me know down below in the comments. I'm happy to help you out. Layers are a little bit confusing to describe, um, but I think once you get into Photoshop and start using it, you'll understand it a little bit better. But hopefully my explanation was good enough to help you guys to get started. 
So if you missed the first week's video, go back, check that out. I linked it a little earlier. Um, if you didn't miss the first week's video, then check out the next week's video, which I will link here once it comes out. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can see all of these videos every week when they come out. Um, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. This is Austin James Jackson. See ya.